Split squat, rear foot elevated, contralateral, dumbbell. The rear foot elevated contralateral split squat is a variation on the Bulgarian split squat. This exercise involves elevating the back foot on a bench or platform while holding a dumbbell in the hand opposite to the working leg, contralateral loading. The rear foot elevated split squat primarily targets the quads, glutes and hamstrings of the working leg while offering a nice stretch to the quads and hip flexors of the non-working leg. Holding a dumbbell in the opposite hand to the front working leg increases the demands on the core, enhancing balance and coordination. This type of loading also challenges the muscles responsible for stabilizing the spine and pelvis. Here's how it works. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate two variations of the contralateral loaded rear foot elevated split squat. The first is the standard version, the torso facing forward while the second incorporates a rotating version that challenges the anterior oblique sling. It's best to use an elevation just below knee height. Here, I'm using a barbell in a squat rack with a pad on it, as it's easy to adjust, but you could also use a box, a bench, or a stack of weight plates. Start by standing with the back of your legs touching the elevated surface. Place the foot of the non-working leg in front of the other, with the heel touching the toe. Then bring the back foot in front of the other foot, again with the heel touching the toe. The working foot is now two foot lengths away from the elevation. This setup ensures consistent positioning from set to set and session to session. Grab a dumbbell in the opposite hand to the front working leg and place the rear foot on top of the elevated surface. Begin by standing tall with your torso upright and the glute of the rear leg contracted to extend the hip. When performing the standard rear foot elevated split squat with the torso facing forward, flex the knee and hip of the front leg to squat down. Notice that the body moves back and down and the knee of the non-working leg moves towards the corner of the floor and the elevated surface. At the same time, keep the torso as upright as possible with the rear hip staying extended. Continue to lower down until your knee lightly touches the floor or until the shin of the non-working leg is perpendicular to the floor. The thigh of the front working leg should be parallel to the floor. It can be helpful to pause at the bottom for two to five seconds to increase the strength of the working leg and the flexibility of the non-working leg. From here, push through the front foot as you extend the knee and the hip of the front leg to return to the starting position maintaining balance and control. Focus on keeping your chest up and core tight throughout the movement. The knee of the front leg should track in line with your toes and not collapse inwards. Maintain stability in your hips. Don't let the hips hike or drop as you move. If you'd like a slightly greater challenge, you can add a rotation to the movement. As you squat down, rotate the opposite shoulder of the working leg towards the working leg to target the anterior oblique sling. This contralateral load with rotation increases the demand on the anterior oblique sling to keep the torso and pelvis stable while transferring force from the ground up through the working leg and core. It effectively engages the obliques and adductors, improving both core stability and lower body strength. It also challenges your control and balance more than the standard version. This exercise is excellent for building lower body strength, improving balance, and addressing muscle imbalances. It's best to perform three to five sets of five to 15 reps depending on your goals and current training phase. Give it a try and see how you go. If you've got questions, please leave them in the comments. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.